on the CJ show. I was listening to it on the way in. He said it in a way... I, I keep going, no, there's going to be a resolution here. Nick's being silly. The Leafs want him. He's going to stay. He's going to play games. It's fine. But CJ goes, well, right now he doesn't want to be a Maple Leaf. <laughs> and when he worded it like that, it was the first time I was like anti-Nick Robertson. I was like, wait a sec. No. No, screw that guy. I hope there are zero Leafs who don't want to be Maple Leafs. What? I, I, I we should all hope that there are zero guys on our team that don't want to be there. I think it's a f it's it's interesting that this is a Pat Brisson client who is one of the biggest agents in the game. The and is known as was it him or Don Meehan that they're the biggest? Uh, I guess it's Pat. No, it's, it's Pat. And, it's Pat. and Jesse bring up doesn't matter. So, no, no, no. Bring up how much money in contracts Pat Brisson controls. It's insane. So so. We talked a little bit about this. We were, we were on a shoot yesterday, the three of us, and I talked a little bit with Steve about this, and I wanted to bring it up. I think, so Nick Robertson made his trade request public, or his camp made the trade request public. It's still not known who did it. Oh, whether it, it I don't think it this. came from his agent. I don't know. And I know it didn't come from him directly, so I don't know who it is. But what I'm wondering is, did he do it too early? Because if... He had waited to see how the summer played out. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have if you if he walks back a trade request now, which was very public on one of the biggest days of the year, July 1st, you walk that back now, you look kind of weak. Even though people move on, sometimes it is a pride thing. I think and Jake I, Debrusque is doing okay. So yeah, is Ilya McKay. Yeah, well, well, it's because here's what they did with Boston with Jake Debrusque said, Yeah, that's cool. Uh, see you in September. Hmm. They, he requested two times yep. to be traded, and they said no. Mm -hmm. And then he finally rescinded the trade request when they were first, and he's like, okay, fine, I'm happier. The Leafs have also said no. Well, and I think that's, the, I mean, the difference is that Robertson's not under contract, but I wonder if, and every player is different in every way, I think that maybe they misplayed their trade request here because maybe the they thought... Camp. Well, yeah, I understand them being pissed off about being scratched in Game 7. I get it. I, get I also it. understand why Sheldon Keefe had him in the doghouse for shitty defensive play, mm -hmm. which is obvious. And I was a Nick Robertson booster all last year. Mm -hmm. You guys remember that. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, I have to say that I think that this was somebody acting of their own volition, a little bit of a wild card shoot from the hip moment, mm -hmm. that perhaps they would maybe want back now. Because I look at this and I go, You've, you, you don't have... There's no incentive for the Leafs to trade him. What do they get? Third pick? Fourth pick? I think they'd they be drafted him. To get a third. Yeah. So that's no, no. not interested. <laughs> um, if you go to the Leafs lineup right now, uh, and it was looking like they were going to go after a guy like David Perron or or some of the other yeah. you know wingers that were out there until they just flat out ran out of money, maybe keep Tyler Bertuzzi. Mm -hmm. I think that they thought they could keep Tyler Bertuzzi. Yeah. I don't know how they thought that, but I think they thought they could. I don't know how you go from we're going to give Tyler Bertuzzi like five million bucks to, oh, OK, well, then we just won't make changes up front then. Well, I think they they, as you said, with Hawk and Paw here, ran out of money. Um, but I, I would look at it and I would say, let's wait and see how this summer plays out, mm -hmm. because there could be an opportunity here. And they didn't. Bertuzzi, I don't even think signed until July 2nd. I'm not sure. He he ended up doing fine. Bertuzzi did great. Signed but my point is, I don't think Chicago. Nick knew that he had the opportunity that is now in front of him. You get to be it's in possible. Toronto. The spotlight is on you. You're on Hockey Night in Canada every Saturday night. Like, we've seen guys come here like Tyler Ennis, uh, Mason Raymond, rehab their careers and get millions of dollars elsewhere, actually both times in Alberta, mm -hmm. um, right after playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And those were bad Leafs teams. Well, at least the Mason Raymond one was. And I look at Robertson's thing, and I'm like, yo, man, just come in, put 18 in the net. You're going to be traded. Yeah. They'll trade you. Mm -hmm. Find a one-year deal, put 18 goals in the net, or play some or, strong defense and and try not to get lit up as much. Like don't get blown up every fucking game. every game, man. Every like that, single game. Nick, Nick, I I I I really like his skill set. His skating needs work, and he gets run over like a freight train well, a lot. Adam, I th I think you're being naive here. Uh, you know what could also happen is they could keep him. He plays really well, and instead of trading him, they offer him millions of dollars to stay. Oh, boo, ew, hiss. Oh, <laughs> God. Gross. I hate it. Uh, what a bad. And they result. need some finishers in the lineup, and he is. He's what got a, a great shot. What a bad result that a lot of like common hockey fans are going to relate to and <laughs> sympathize with. I think they will. I think people can understand no. the position he's in, but no. I think that they overplayed their hand here. I under listen. I understand being upset at a team for taking uh, 
opportunities away from you that you think you deserved. Absolutely understand that. I've been young and full of fire and, and thought I, sh I should have been ahead of this person for this opportunity. And that I was like, yeah, absolutely. I've been jealous and young too. But and I've also, okay. I've also been able to look ahead of me and go, there's an opening here. Like, isn't that like, how old's Robertson? 22. Yeah. Isn't that half of what being 22 is? Well, it's going, oh shit, I'm next up. When, like if, the, if he were under contract and mm -hmm. the season began tomorrow, Here's what I would roll out. Uh, nice top line left wing. Robertson, second line. I'm serious. McMahon third. Just I, I think I, he's more suited for a third line role. He's a well. better overall player, but he's more suited for a third line role. I'd, I would probably end up giving McMahon more minutes, mm -hmm. but I would have Robertson on the second line. More McMinutes yeah. on the third line. I like and that. And then fourth line, uh, I'll be totally yeah, honest. Who, I don't give a shit. 11-7. There is no third line left or fourth line left wing. Steven Lorenz, who you refused to do a video on. I did. Because uh, he's not signed. I, here's here's what I think. Yeah. <laughs> if he signs, I'll be there. Like, yeah. shit then on Velcro. Then you can talk at least like how we played in the training camp. Yeah. yeah. There'll be there'll be meat on the bone for a video. Yes. No, I know. no. Adam wants me to like. <laughs> okay. Just <laughs> now, nibble. Just, yeah. Gnaw at the bone. <laughs> whatever that is. You talked about, Suck out the marrow. Yeah. You guys talked about. You, you, you quickly talked about there. It's like, oh, do you see the opportunity? At what point, Jesse and Steve, last year was Nick Robertson a can't fucking miss you have to to be to to take that next step you have to be uh I the coach you literally cannot give them a choice mm -hmm. at what point was he that he wasn't sorry I got stuck he, on another thought the the bone but, marrow but they relate okay the, the, not the bone marrow <laughs> um so I'm trying to think of ways you can get angry Right, okay. which I I, I can relate to. to. Like okay. okay, Robertson's asking out because he's angry, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. So okay, here's my strength then, <laughs> as a fellow angry guy. Okay, but you what could he be angry about? What's a situation where he goes, you know what, that does it. Scratched in game seven. Scratched in game seven. Bruin scored one goal in regulation before overtime, and what line was on the ice? The fourth. And who was out there? It was Noah Gregor. Now, Noah Gregor took his spot in the lineup, if I'm not mistaken. But Robertson was never on that line. No. So it, I don't think it's that. But you know what would have been helpful as a way to play in Game 7? Is if your stat line didn't read 6 zero, zero, zero. He didn't do anything. Oh, the coach didn't play. Where, where should the coach have played you? You know what I mean? Like, okay, he we we talked about how he, he played one. Mitch Marner he played like one that. fewer game than Mitch Marner, but had one fewer shot. One I more think. shot, mm -hmm. or one more shot. I can't remember if yeah. it was one more or one fewer. Did any of them go in? No. Were they great? Who knows? Shut. So I have to look back. Go back and look. <laughs> so then, so then we're trying to figure out the timing. So you and I had a very interesting conversation yesterday because you said Robertson uh, declared or asked for his trade too early. I think he asked too early. I said he asked for it too late. And the reason I say that is I think if you say it before the draft, you give the Leafs. I mean, everyone's in the same building. Robertson, Robertson, Robertson. What do you all think of Robertson, Robertson, Robertson? And then you give them more opportunity to do business for you. I think if he had done that, there's a greater opportunity. The, the, there's, there's a greater chance that some team would have traded for you rather than sign some journeyman. Yep. All the spots. Like if you pull up the sharks, the ducks, <laughs> the if you pull up the dregs of the NHL standings, you're not forcing people out. No, you're not. Meanwhile, there's like a almost slam dunk playoff team here. How are they going to do in the playoffs? Let's be honest. We have no idea. The evidence we have no idea, but the real answer is evidence shows probably shit. Yeah. You have an opportunity here. Now, where Adam and I agree, I said he did it too uh, er late. I said too early. You said too early. 
Here's the real answer. Not July fucking 1st. Yeah. What's the matter with you? Don't walk it. And and, and now he's got to, if he's going to play, he's got to walk it back. And 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 then, then to add on to this, guys, and this is where I think things get really interesting is you have a 19-year-old Easton Cowan who is a left-shooting right wing... Who's about to lap you. ...who could take that top six role. If Nick Robertson was going to camp, the Leafs could probably say, you know what, Let's sit. even though Easton had 96 points in 54 games for the Knights and won the championship and whatever, he's got nothing else to prove at that level. Let's give him one more year. Mm-hmm. Or even two more years. Because we don't need him. We don't need him... We, we want him develop, to develop. I don't know where he's at at his development curve, but think about this. Nick Robertson could have that role. But if Easton Cowan goes to camp and Nick Robertson's not there and Easton Cowan takes that role, guess what Guess what? at least the first nine games of the season are going to look like? If Fraser Minton, who I'm convinced tops out as like a third-line center, which is great. I don't know. I don't hate that. <laughs> they could use one right if now. Fraser, I, well, I think he's going to make the team. Uh, everybody's like, what are they going to do with center depth? I'm like, uh, Fraser Minton. I, don't know. Um, I, I look at... I look at the Easton Cowan piece of this and go, Nick, if you don't jump in now, that guy's coming to take your spot. Mm-hmm. And when Easton Cowan does, and I think he will, because I think this this guy, from everything that I've read and heard, and every every scouting report said this guy is one of the most determined players that they've ever seen. I think Nick Robertson is leaving money on the table. It's that serious. If he comes in... Nick Robertson comes in and scores 18 to 20 goals. And I think he's a 20 goal scorer in the NHL. He's got flaws in his game. He's still got time to improve them. Nick Robertson is a what? Three and a half, four million dollar player at 20 goals a game? No. Or 20 goals a season? I mean, is that crazy? And as a million UFA, dollar capital? as a UFA, it's not crazy at all. Yeah, yeah. As an RFA, okay, maybe two and a half. Right, right. Two and a half million sounds like a lot of money to me. I'll take it. I'll take it. Mm-hmm. Especially for playing hockey. That sounds great. Nick Robertson, for me, just doesn't do enough on the in the box score. And on the ice, besides put in a couple goals every now and again to justify everything that's going on right now. It's worth mentioning that a few of them were in dog shit games. Right. No. Yeah. When you're going to get more ice time. Yeah. No, like he had he had that stretch at the late at the end of last season where over the course of eight games, he had four goals and two assists. Like awesome. But he didn't really. Pro- he doesn't provide much else. Like you don't see him fill up uh, a bunch of blocks on the on the in the box score, a bunch of hits or anything like that. And then his his judgment in terms of uh, just his awareness, his hockey sense, it needs so much improvement. He's not there yet as an NHLer. So for 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 Nick, like I don't understand where all of this is coming from because he's not that type of player yet. Mm-hmm. I I completely agree, and I think that's where um, Jesse. I think that's where. This is his opportunity right now. Yeah. And if he and if Steve Steve made a good point, if you go and you look at the other teams around the NHL, even the worst ones, this is the time. Don't don't yeah. fumble this. Don't fumble this because this the Leafs will sit you on this one. I don't think they're messing around anymore with this. One of the things we were talking about, like okay, we were talking about getting a third for him. You're not getting a third. So like, if the option is like get a fourth for Robertson or sit him. I'd rather fuck your career up. Like I'm, I'm serious. That's, as, what, as that's how manager, the Leafs would look at it. That's a hundred percent. No, no. As me, I'm cheering for. I want the player to get all the money and score all the goals. And I'm going to pretend the salary cap doesn't exist. So I hope he signs for five um, years and million. In case you were wondering, um, but that's a fairy tale land that does not exist. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a the money that we're talking about going to Hawk and Paw. <laughs> <laughs> Ought to be going to Robertson at like a relatively reasonable cap hit. Um, like Connor Dewar scored at a similar goal scoring pace. We don't know that as Leafs fans. To Hawk and Paw or Robertson? Robertson. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Well, sorry. With with Minnesota, Robertson. Yes. With the Leafs, Hawk and Paw. Right, right, right. For some reason, like that, all of that went away. Could have yeah. used one in game seven when he had that breakaway shit. Um, like. That guy's making over. Connor Dewar is making over a million dollars. Well, so the other thing that that as an RFA, he yes, signed because that he's as a valuable RFA. piece of their their PK, and I think they're trying to rebuild their PK. Their PK yeah. was a problem last Robertson year. Robertson PK in junior. Yeah, but he. Like, at, I know at I the know. NHL level, Robertson isn't that useful. Like that's that's what I was trying to say. Like he doesn't provide penalty kill help in in those respects. He doesn't provide help in the other aspects of of the ice. So I, it's for him to sit out and expect so much more from the Leafs, it, the Leafs need to sit here and say, no, prove it to us that you are yeah. more useful to us. The fact that Robertson isn't an NHL regular isn't entirely his fault. 
it's also not entirely the Leafs' fault. It's your bones broke. You know, yeah. like you got injured and stuff and like you got to run before you can walk. And some of the, like his, um, w- one of the most, we were, we were talking about this yesterday and what brought it up was Nikolai Kuhleman, which I guess mm-hmm. we'll get to, but, uh, Gus Ketsaros came on our, our podcast. I don't even years ago, 40 years ago. The, the yeah. show's yeah. probably not even still. On. <laughs> yeah. And so long ago he was talking about, um, skating and you know, what makes a good skater. And, and he was talking about, there's players out there who look like they're working hard every shift and maybe they are, mm-hmm. but they look like they're working harder than everyone else because they're skating inefficiently. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And the player that we used as an example was Nikolai Kuhleman who skated like we'll have more was, on him later. He was skate. He skated like he kayaked like busy feet. Well, just imagine someone, you know how you got to row with a kayak, right? Yeah. It, it's not necessarily the feet. It's his body mm-hmm. is going all over the frigging place. He's got to spend so much more energy to move the same speed and same distance as someone who knows how to skate better. <laughs> and I mean, Kuhlman turned, he had a fine NHL career, made a bunch of money in the KHL. He might be back in the NHL at 38 years old. What a frigging miracle. But like Robertson... As a as a small guy, you got to be friggin' fast, and I go, wow, he looks like a mini Kuhlman out there sometimes. He does, and it, it, he's such a funny fit on the Leafs, a team that doesn't shoot enough. He could be great for that. There's so many times where I'm like, shoot the damn puck, and then he does. He's the one player on the team you don't have to ask to shoot, which I love. We need maybe that. Matthews. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if let, let's say Nylander and Matthews and Nyes are playing together? Yeah. No way. You, you could have winger. You could have Max Domi and Mitch Marner setting you up. But every player on the team, I'm like, shoot! And him, I'm like, no, are you sure? <laughs> Why? Because he's, he's got he, a great shot. He does have a great shot. Well, it's funny. There, there are times there was a goal last season. I'm trying to remember who it was against. It was like high slot. And I remember being like, that is a low percentage shot that so few people on the planet can score the way you scored it, but you scored because your shot is a weapon. Mm-hmm. Like he was off balance, like one foot. I, I'm trying to remember who it was against. He, It's a bullet. The reason he shoots shots that maybe don't always look like a good choice mm-hmm. is because he has confidence in his shot and it's because he should, you know, but it, what I'm trying to say, I was pointing out the skating is like, listen, I keep talking about the, the the COVID factor with players drafted 2018, 19, 20. Um, who's had their development fucked up more than that kid? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, you were... And, and like, some good, some bad. Like, you were over a goal a game in junior. In what should have been your second last year in junior. He had another year of eligibility, if I'm not mistaken. Then the world stops and they change. They literally change the rules and the playoffs are in frigging August and he gets to play playoff games for the Leafs in a year where they technically did not qualify for the Stanley Cup playoffs. And that's great. Then they change the rules. He also again. got injured. He also got injured. Then they change the rules again, though. You can now play in the AHL. In a year where you sh- are not eligible to. You are a North American skater under the age of 20. You are not eligible to play in the American Hockey League. Global pandemic. Guess what? That's now legal. And your contract, uh, was it? Slides. Your ELC slides. So he's in the American Hockey League, I assume making a professional salary, a year ahead of when he was supposed to. So, you know, they took that opportunity away from me and this and that and that. Oh, okay, well, let's not also lose sight of what also fell into your lap. But why it, why he might lose sight of those things is each of his first two years as a professional got fucked up by injuries and he played very few games. And during that time where you weren't playing games, you weren't on the ice and you weren't able to work on things that would make you an NHL regular today on this team. It's difficult to explain to someone who's competitive and fiery and passionate and young that 
you got to settle down a little bit here. Mm-hmm. You don't want to tell a competitor in a competitive space to settle down. But he's got to settle down. But here. you can't let your ambition eat you alive either. It pushes you, but you cannot let it kill you. It's unreasonable to ask what he's asking for when the solution is looking him dead in the face. The solution, it, dude, there's a, there, the guys ahead of you are dude who's younger than you in Matthew Nice. Um, Bobby McMahon, who is a, by all accounts, a miracle. He was He's no one. NHL. 12 months ago, Bobby McMahon was no one. We were not talking about no him in one. September. Nobody. And look what he did with an opportunity. He was waved. Yeah. Waved. Um, and then who else is there? Holmberg, who is not a full-time winger. No. And Dewar, who's the same. It's there, Nick. And he can play both wings. Mm-hmm. Like, we're losing sight of that. Like, the Leafs' problem at left wing, I think I think maybe they bring um, Yarn Croak over to the left. Domi can play the right. When he was with Matthews, he was playing the right. So there's an option. But it's, it's right there. It's there, no... There might not be a team in the league that needs you more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and lucky you, they own your rights and you won't sign here. Yep. Two, I don't get it. Two things. Nick Robertson skating. He, according to NHL Edge, he had zero bursts over 35 kilometers per hour last season. He is in the below 50th percentile in 32 kilometer bursts to 35 kilometer bursts and 29 kilometer bursts to 32 kilometer bursts. He's not very fast for his position. Does NHL Edge keep track of uh, how many times a player got pancaked? No, I don't. They think don't. So. But uh, based on the numbers from the NHL and their skating tracking, he is not one of the quickest, as per Steve Dangle's assessment of his kayak skating. Other thing, um, in terms of his shots on goal, and him always getting pepper and shots on goal. Oh, what did you? Want? Well, no, it, I'm just for all his flaws. I'm looking at those stats, and I know he played what was it, 54 games? I think. Mm, some uh, 56. 56. Mm-hmm. 14 goals, 13 assists, 27 points. Gosh darn. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a nearly 20 goal, roughly 40 point player in a regular season. Every team in the league needs that. The 14 Every goal, team in the league. The 14 goals were done on a relatively high shooting percentage. It was 14 point something percent, That's which is not that high. Which, eh, it's 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 uh, it's not crazy high, it's but the goal high. score to be in that range. I would though, expect yeah, yes. I would expect it also to be more. He was 9 the year before that. We didn't play a bunch of games obviously. Yeah, right. shots shot developing as he gets older. I'd expect it to be in like 12 range, so you've knocked 2%. What's stuff. his career? Not that big of a difference. It's a little skewed because of, like I said it was 9 the year before. So oh, right, right, right. Okay. A little skewed. Um in terms of shots, uh shots on goal per game for Nick, uh 1.7 Shots per game. Mitch Marner, in comparison, shot 2.2 shots per game. I would like shots per 60 because Marner's ahead of him. Shots per game. Shots per 60. Nick is probably close to double. And this isn't a criticism. Like, Marner is a... No, I just think it's a fun comparison on Mitch Marner, who we think should shoot more. And Nick Robertson, yes. who uh, we he shoots a lot, you know. One of the things like they're getting all similar shots per game. One of, one of my pet projects is uh, looking at like power play shots per sixty for the Leafs over the past few years and what's going wrong and comparing it to their regular season. Marner, Matthews, Tavares. Can I bring up all name? plummet? <laughs> Can I bring up another name? Sure. On the left side that nobody's talking about. Give me Alex Nylander. He's yeah. not under NHL contract. He's, he'll be at camp. He'll play exhibition games. He scored 11 goals in 20. I know he had a bad year with Pittsburgh Penguins. I get it. Five games, no goals. Mm-hmm. 23 games, 11 goals with the Columbus Blue Jackets. It's another... Listen, he might not be the guy that, that takes that job. It's three Shire Robertson. But it's yet another person that could take what should be Nick Robertson. It's, it's possible. 